Hey everybody and welcome back. It is class number 10 in our Algebra 2 series, so we are really trucking through. We're making it. Uh, today is about complex numbers. We Last class we talked about imaginary numbers. Today we are going into complex numbers and complex solutions and what you can do with complex numbers. So objectives for today, identify the real and imaginary parts of complex numbers. We're going to add and subtract them. We're going to multiply and then we're going to look at kind of dividing. It's mostly if we have complex numbers in a fraction, how can we simplify it as opposed to dividing like actual division of complex numbers um, that will come at a later point. Uh, questions for today. What are the important steps to remember when adding and subtracting complex numbers? And then how do you simplify a fraction that has a complex or imaginary denominator? So last class, we talked about projectile word problems. So that was with our um, projectile motion UVAST equations. Um, that was the minus 16 T squared plus initial velocity times T plus the initial height or the minus 4.9 T squared if we were talking about meters per second, the first one being feet per second. We also simplified ne negative radicals and introduced imaginary numbers. And then we looked at, well, what happens if you have I raised to a power that's like greater than four? What do you do with that? When well, you subtract out um, powers of four until you get down to a remainder of something between one and four, and then you evaluate. So complex numbers, it's a set of complex numbers. So complex numbers is its own thing. If you have a real and an imaginary component, you get a complex number. What's also worth noting is that the set of complex numbers also contains the entire set of real numbers and the entire set of imaginary numbers. So what that means is an imaginary number is also a complex number. A real number is also a complex number, but a complex number does not have to be just real or just imaginary. A complex number can be neither because it can contain both parts. So a complex number will be written in the format of a real number plus an imaginary number or minus an imaginary number. So it'll have both, but we can always imagine that the real part is say like zero. So zero plus B I is still complex and you know, A plus zero I is also still technically a complex number, even though we would not normally associate it with that. We would just say, oh, it's a real number, um, not recognizing that it is in fact complex as well. So just be aware of that, that all numbers that you are normally used to dealing with are complex numbers. And now we're adding in imaginary numbers too to complete the set. So when it comes to operations on complex numbers, it's pretty straightforward. It's kind of like you would do in algebra anyway, if you were adding variables. So if you think of I as a variable, it gets a little bit easier. So if we're asked to add the components here, we add or subtract the imaginary and the real parts separately. So minus seven plus two I plus five minus 11 I, so two complex numbers. We can drop the parentheses at this point because nothing is nothing special is happening. So it's minus seven plus two I plus five minus 11 I. And then the seven and the five are both real. So minus seven plus five is minus two. And two I minus 11 I, those are the complex or the imaginary parts. That would be minus nine I. That's it. Real part followed by imaginary part would be the grammatically correct way of writing it, but you would not be incorrect to have the I first. Did not leave enough space for myself. All right, so then the next one, it's subtracted. So we do have to consider, you know, that has to be distributed to everything inside the parenthesis. So the minus one does apply to the real and imaginary parts in the same way. So it'll be 18 plus 27i minus 2 minus 3i. And then same steps as last time, combine like terms. So 18 minus 2, 16, 27 minus 3, 24i. That's it. That's all there is to adding and subtracting. You keep the real parts together, you keep the imaginary parts together, and they don't mix. So take a shot at these two, pause the video, come back and check your work and make sure you are on the right track. Okay, so if we do 17 minus 6i minus 9 plus 10i, we've got a minus going on in here. So 17 minus 6i 
minus 9 minus 10i. Biggest mistake I'll see people make is they'll do the minus 9, but they forget to distribute it to the 10 as well. That minus applies to the whole parenthesis. 17 minus 9 is 8, minus 6 minus 10i, minus 6i. Second one, it's addition, so nothing's going to change. 16 plus 17i, minus 8, minus 12i. 16 minus 8 is 8. 17i minus 12i is a positive 5i. Should be pretty straight and um, straightforward for everyone. Multiplying complex numbers. This one gets a little bit more tricky because they are going to mix in this case. So it's just normal distributive property, but then um, once we do the distributive property, we keep adding and subtracting like terms. And we also have to watch out for an i squared in here. So in the first one, 4 plus 9i times 6 minus 2i. So distributive property, first times first, we get 24. First times last, minus 8i. Last times first, would be plus 54i. And 9i times minus 2i is minus 18. And then i times i is i squared. So we 24 minus 8 plus 54 is plus 46i. Now you've got minus 18. And then we know i squared is equal to minus 1. Because remember, i is equal to the square root of minus 1. So i squared square both sides, square root and square cancel, we're left with minus 1. So the final answer, well, almost final answer, 24 plus 46i minus 18 times minus 1 is plus 18. 24 and 18 can now be added together. So we get 42 plus 46i. So that would be the simplified version of this. So distributive property like normal, add your i's together, real numbers together, and then you're going to typically get an i squared. So watch out for that. That will be substitute with minus 1 and then simplify. So an imaginary number squared is going to end up becoming a real number. That's kind of the, the key part. Second one, minus 3 times 7 is negative 21. Minus 3 times 4i, so plus 12i. Plus... 84i, and then 12 times 4 is plus 48i squared. So minus 21 stays the same. 12 plus 84 is 96, and then 48 times minus 1. So we're going to have a minus 48 here. Minus 48 minus 21 is minus 69 plus 96i. All right, take a shot at it. We've got two questions. Just um, distribute, simplify, and then make sure that you have brought it down to just two terms. You're writing it in the form a plus bi. Actually, there's a third one here too. All right, pause the video, come back, see how you did. 6 times 3, 18. Minus 60i. Minus 15i. Plus 50i squared. So that'll be 18 minus 75i. And then 50 times i squared is minus 1, so it's going to be minus 50. So our final answer will be 68 minus 75i. Second one, we've got 18 times 11, which is 108, uh, plus 18i, plus 55i, plus 5i squared. 
and just remember that's going to be a minus 1. So it's going to be minus 5. So 198 minus 5 is 193. 18 plus 55 is 73. And then your i at the end. Now last one, I need a little bit more space. So I'm just going to come over here to the right. So we've got 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i. So same values, just a difference in sign in the middle. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 6i plus 6i. And then we got minus 4i squared. So minus 6i plus 6i, the 6i's actually cancel, and it's going to be minus 4 times minus 1, because the i is going to turn, i squared is going to turn to minus 1. So it's going to be 9 plus 4, which is 13. So this one has no imaginary component. It just is a real solution. And this is actually an important thing for us to notice. Do you recognize the format that this is written in? So the question was written as a difference of two squares question. So I don't know if you remember that from Algebra 1, but difference of two squares, two values subtracted that are both can be both written as square numbers, is equal to the two of them added and the two of them subtracted. So this is an important idea for us, difference of two squares. If you have forgotten about that from Algebra 1, make sure you note down that formula. All right, so difference two squares, I just talked about that. We use that to simplify fractions. So in complex numbers or in just math in general, it's usually unacceptable to have an imaginary number in the denominator. Same thing with a radical. We don't like radicals in the denominator. We don't like imaginary numbers in the denominator. We usually want those to be positive whole numbers or positive fractions where possible. So how we get rid of it, thinking about what we just did in the last question, if I were to multiply the denominator by, so this is 1 minus 5i, if I were to multiply that by 1 plus 5i, it would cancel down to become a real number because the imaginary parts would cancel out in the center. So it would be something squared, something squared, and the i squared would turn into a real number. Well, if I'm going to multiply that on the denominator, I must also do it on the numerator because if something is divided by itself, well, its true value is just 1, and you can multiply anything by 1, and it does not change the value of the number. So it's kind of like when we, in completing the square, we add a number to allow us to complete the square, and then we subtract it again to keep the equation balanced. Sort of the same idea here. We're multiplying by a number and dividing by the same number to keep our equation balanced. When you multiply fractions, in case you've forgotten, you multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators, and then you simplify. So we get... 3 plus 4i times 1 plus 5i on top, and that's 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 5i is 15i, 4i times 1 is 4i, and 4 times 5 is 20i squared. So that's going to be a minus 1, it's going to be minus 20, so minus 20 plus 3 is minus 17. 15 plus 4 is 19i. So this is going to be our numerator. I'm just going to kind of put a dot on that to keep it for later. The denominator, so the part on the bottom, 1 minus 5i, 1 plus 5i. So the 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5i, minus 5i. And then we got minus 25i squared. So that last part multiplied. Five i's cancel. And we get 1 minus 25 times minus 1. So when we replace that i squared with minus 1, it turns into a plus 25. So that's a 26. So then bring those two together. The numerator is minus 17 plus 19i. And it's all over 26. So this would be in simplified form. Now, if the 17, 19, and 26 all had a common factor that canceled, we would simplify that. But 17, 19, and 26 don't have um, any common factors. So we are done.
All right, take a shot at it. You've got three examples, each of them with a complex number in the denominator. So simplify and then, um, you know, or sorry, multiply by the part that will allow it to be a difference of two squares and then simplify it. Come back and see how you did. So for the first one, we're going to have to multiply on top and bottom by 3 minus 6i. So we got 4 times 3 minus 6i is 12 minus 24i. So that's our numerator. And then 3 plus 6i times 3 minus 6i. So 3 times 3 is 3 squared. We know the middle part's going to cancel out, so we'll have minus 18i, we'll have plus 18i, and at the end we'll have 6 times 6, so minus 36i squared. And i squared becomes a minus 1. So it's going to be 3 squared, which is 9, plus 36, which is 45. So all over 45. 12, 24, and 45 are all divisible by 3. So we can simplify this down a little bit more. So 12 divided by 3 is 4 minus 8i all over 15. Done. Second one. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2 minus 4i. So we got 1 minus i times 2 minus 4i. So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times minus 4 is minus 4i. Minus i times 2 is minus 2i. Minus i times minus 4i is plus 4i squared. So that'll be a minus 4. So minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. Minus 4i minus 2i is minus 6i. So here's my numerator, my top line. For the denominator, 2 plus 4i, 2 minus 4i. So we know the middle part's going to cancel out, so I just have to do 2 times 2 is 2 squared, which is 4. And 4i times minus 4i is minus 16i, which is going to become a plus. 16. So 16 plus 4 is 20. So my final answer is going to be minus 2 minus 6i all over 20, all divisible by 2. So we're going to end up with minus 1 minus 3i all over 10. And last one. I know it's just minus 4i. You can think of that as 0 minus 4i. So the um, part that would cancel out would be 0 plus 4i, or just 4i. So minus 4i times 4i will um, cause the imaginary part to disappear. So we have to do that on top as well. So it would be 4i over 4i. So 18 times 4 is 64. Nope, 72. 72, 7 times 4 is 28, so plus 28i squared. And then that'll be over minus 4 times positive 4, so minus 16i squared. So the i squareds are negative 1s, so it's going to be 72 minus, and sorry, that's 72 should be an i. So yeah, 18 times 4i would be 72i, 7i times 28 squared. Okay, so we'll have minus 28 is the real part, plus 72i all over minus 16 times minus 1 is positive 16. Um, divisible by 4, divisible by 4, and divisible by 4, so all divisible by 4. So we have minus 7 plus 18i all over 4. Final answer.
All right, so short one today. What are the important steps? Remember when adding, subtracting, you keep the real parts together, you keep the um, imaginary parts together, and if there is subtraction of complex numbers, make sure you distribute that negative to all terms. How do you simplify a fraction that has a complex denominator? Make sure that you multiply by what the um, other factor that will allow you to do difference of two squares. So if the real number and the imaginary number are being added, then you would do real minus imaginary. If they were being subtracted, then you would do real plus imaginary. And then simplify it out on, you have to do the same thing on top and bottom and then simplify. All right, after today, module two, the complex numbers folder. Make sure you get that one completed. So you've got the lesson done, discussion question, and independent practice.